Hi and welcome to the Creative Treehouse. My name is Robin Broom and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Thanks so much for joining me in the treehouse today. Today's project is basically this one, although I tweaked it. It's a book binding card. So relatively easy, but really fun. And that's what the inside looks like. For some reason, my camera's uh, making it a lot brighter than it really is. But I tweaked this, so let me show you the measurements or tell you the measurements. Um, and we'll make one that I liked just a little bit better than this one. The original one or the one that I tweaked, I've already sent off in the mail. So we'll start with a soft succulent card base. Soft succulent is one of my favorite colors. It seems like almost all of my very all-time favorite colors are in colors. So we've got another year for this one to be able to have stashes and stashes of this. So soft succulent and it is cut. It's half of the piece of eight and a half by 11. So it's eight and a half by five and a half and it's scored at four and a quarter. You'll make one additional score mark at three and a half and that allows it to be a book binding card. So you've got the four and a quarter and the three and a half. So you will fold it on the four and a quarter like you would a regular A2 card, but the extra score mark, the three and a half, will make it be a book binding card. And you'll end up putting adhesive here and that makes it the book binding. All right, so that's the base. You'll also need a piece of vellum and the vellum is cut at five and three eighths by three and three eighths. And then you will need uh, two pieces of the Evening Evergreen, one for your dragonfly and one for the sentiment. And you'll be using gold embossing powder for each of those. This one is cut at two and three quarters by two, two and three quarters by two, approximately, just to have enough room for your dragonfly. And then also the smaller piece for the sentiment is cut at two and three quarters by three quarters, two and three quarters by three quarters. You'll need a piece of soft succulent also that goes behind that and it is cut at uh, two and seven eighths by seven eighths. So just slightly, slightly larger so that it ends up being like the mat behind it. Okay. And then I used, um, this came from the, the wonderful DSP from the, I think it was Eden's Garden, it was called Ever Eden or something like that. So absolutely gorgeous paper and it, a lot of it had the, the gold in it that we're going to be using. And this piece of DSP is cut at 5 and 5 sixteenths by 5 eighths. 5 and 5 sixteenths by 5 eighths. All right, our inside piece of the basic white is five and one eighth by three and one eighth. All right, and I use the dandelion embossing folder and that is retired, but look at how pretty that is. Isn't that just, oh, that's just gorgeous. And I just love the way it, it's all raised and the vellum doesn't, isn't showing up that well on the camera. And then, we, of course, we have our dragonfly stamp. We have gold trim, and the gold trim that I'm using is retired, but there is a, a, another one that's not quite as thin that's now that you can now get as well. And then, of course, we've got the gold embossing powder, and you'll need your, your Versamark, and, of course, the dragonfly stamps. And I actually used two. I used one on the outside and one on the inside, the other, the second dragonfly. So that is everything that you'll need. And I've already uh, done the embossing for that. So let's see how we can put it all together. Um, it's really, it's pretty simple. There's actually, I think, did I? There is one piece of Evening Evergreen that I failed to mention and it goes underneath that. You don't have to put it in there, but it's just a little, in fact, I think it'll look just fine without it but I will, I will add those dimensions to it. So it's just a little bit bigger, so it pretty much fills up that entire piece. And if you, if you wanted that dimension, I think I've got that one. Do I have that one? Da, da, da. No, maybe not. Evening Evergreen. 
I do. It's five and three eighths by eleven sixteenths. If you want to use that one, five and three eighths by eleven sixteenths. I think that's the one that my puppy just ate. Yeah, I bet I recognize that now. <laughs> my puppy is something else so I I need to just include her probably in my in my blog it's she is oh my goodness so she's just turned a year old but she is still Miss Destructo all right so I'm going to go ahead and we're gonna glue this one down I'm just gonna use some of the liquid glue and we're gonna glue this here and like I said I think you can use the the other piece of the evening evergreen underneath that all right and then what i did with this one was i decided to go through with my liquid glue and because it's a dandelion we can just kind of dot it and you'll never see it you'll never notice it as long as the dots are small if you made a great big blob it would definitely show so but just little lots of little dots on the dandelion and that works well to kind of glue because being vellum it's a little bit a little bit tricky and then I'm going to see if I can put a dot here a dot over here one here and one here okay now we're gonna adhere that down center it We'll see. Um, you could also use the glue dots. I think would would probably also work. So let's see how that how that works as it dries. All right, and then just in case you have not experienced, because I already have it, this sentiment done, and I and I even have the dragonfly, but I thought. For some people, they have not experienced, they may be new to stamping, have not experienced the really cool effect um, in the neat uh, chemical reaction or whatever that you get when you emboss. So I thought I would just do a really quick um, show of embossing. And so I've got my Versamark, I've got my stamp, and you can, if you needed to, you can go through and use an embossing buddy on it to, to try to make sure that there's no static and no extra things that you don't want on there. Now this one, if I remember correctly, we need to stamp it this way with the tail, the dragonfly's tail at the bottom. And the reason for that is because of the way that the punch is that we're going to use. I think I failed to mention the punch. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to get my gold embossing. Let me see if I have a scratch piece of paper. I usually have something else that I can, that I use. I usually have a, a little container. So we just put the gold embossing on top. Okay, let me see if I can, how much of it I can get back in there. Oh, it looks like a pretty good coverage and you'll want to just tap it from the back and I see if I can get this extra little bit into the container all right and now is when the magic happens I love the gold on the this deep evergreen color all right so I'll take our heat tool and I'm gonna heat it up and if it's really obnoxiously loud I'll see if I can perhaps uh, mute it on the video so but just and I'll also see if there's a way that you can really watch it change as it heats up so, and the, the light just see if I can turn it just Ah. 
So I think you were able to see, wasn't that cool? It's just so neat. Yes, and uh, people have asked, can you use a hair dryer? And the answer is no. Um, it's completely different. Um, this is has very, it's very directed. I think it's, uh, I don't, I don't know. But anyway, this is, you need a heat tool to use with the embossing. I think your hair dryer would blow it all over the place. All right, so let's get our, our punch. And if you're not familiar with the punches, you will use it upside down so so that you can line it up and see where your dragonfly is let's see if i can get it lined up to make sure his tail and his head are not decapitating him and i'll punch it and pop him out all right so here is the dragonfly check that out all right so we've got our dragonfly and now we can continue to put him together. And for my card, we can put this one on the soft succulent. And again, I'm using the liquid glue. And it doesn't take a lot and you wanna make it fairly even and smooth. All right, so there's the sentiment and it's going to I put it up on dimensionals. So let me grab our dimensionals. I think I'll use the regular size. I think I'll just, oh, let's do three. So we'll do three dimensionals. Okay. Pull the backs off and then I set that about right there. And again, I embossed this as well. And I believe that's a new sentiment. I'll write it down on the blog um, as to which one that is. And we need some dimensionals for the dragonfly. And I think I'll move to the to the mini dimensionals because that will go well for his wings. And his tail is going to be can be a little bit of a problem as far as um, the envelope all right so now we will take the backs off of all the minis you could have put a, a larger one regular dimensional in the center and then we're going to put him down oh, probably right about there all right so we are really really close um, and on mine i used the other dragonfly and I put I used him to make with in the soft succulent ink and I just thought that added just a little bit and so that will go in here but we also we need to turn it into our book binding and then what I did for that was I took the the string and I liked the gold and cut it and I've heard, and I don't have it yet, but I heard there might be some reverse tweezers that are going to be available. And that'll be, that will be awesome. Because you kind of need a third hand a lot of times when you're making tying bows. <laughs> well, yep, definitely. Okay, let's see. This is really flimsy. But it's so pretty. <laughs> yep, I need I need the third hand. All right. Oop, I think I got it. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna get the bow the way I would like it. This particular one unravels uh, very easily, so you can always stick a little bit of it in um, the liquid glue. And that will help with the with the fraying. Just a tiny, tiny touch. All right, and then um, it's, it also helps if you take a, a glue dot and you take a pick tool and you kind of secure it down just a little. So I'm going to pull a, a glue dot off. And these, are, whoops, sorry about that, are glue dots a little bit bigger than this particular so we can probably there that looks good this helps to adhere it down 
So that looks great. And now we're, all we have to do is, well, we're going to put that in where we're going to just, and you can decide where, if you want that to be, where you want that to be, right in the center or if it's going to be adhered down or not. All right, let me get back to my glue. Um, usually the liquid glue is fine. You can also use a little bit of the tear and tape and that works also. You just need to let the liquid glue set for a little while before you, before it's completely finished. All right. All right, and that is going to be it. That is our card. So, like I said, it looks so much better in real life. And I think, looking looking again, this is not dried anymore. I think I would probably try a the glue dot and see if, if that was a, a better way to do it. Um, I also had some that I just left those open. I did not uh, adhere them down at all, and it was fine because you still have all of this and all of those things that are adhering it down. Unless you just have a recipient that goes crazy, it should it should stay down. So that is the card. I'm so excited and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope uh, if you've never made a book binding card that you will and hope you have some of these products and if not, just adapt to whatever you have. So that's the fun thing about all the, the wonderful coordinating products that Stampin' Up! has. So thanks for joining me in the treehouse. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please, hit the subscribe button and I try to make a video at least every other week. My ultimate goal is once a week, but hadn't hadn't gotten there yet. But I am so thankful for 1000 subscribers. Thank you if you've already subscribed and I'll see you next time in the treehouse. Bye-bye.